Welcome back to First Strike, where we bring you an early fight breakdown. Best bets for UFC 304. We got a big pay-per-view card, Leon Edwards, Bilal Mohammed going out there for another try to see if the strap can change hands. This is going to be a big card. We got two big belt opportunities on the line in the main card. And we got nobody better than the Apex Predators of the Octagon to talk to you guys about this main card event and what we see in the future. All building up to a big Saturday. We're hoping to be that preeminent source for you guys to get early fight analysis and get those best bets in before the lines move. Coming off a big 3-0 and or 8-2 and two in our last 10 with first strike. I'm fired up. I can't wait for Saturday. Wednesday's quickly becoming my second favorite day of the week here next to Saturday's. Sub, how are we feeling? Feeling great, man. This is a quality pay-per-view. Uh, love these cards every time Every time they go to England. It's just fireworks. So I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to it in a big way. Uh, Jeff, how are you feeling about this one, my brother? I am looking forward to it. As you said, it is going to be an exciting card. These England pay-per-view events always seem to bring the action, and I expect a lot of it with a lot of interesting uh, fight matchups here. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, as always. We have got the two mainstay staples of London fights and Molly Meatball McCann fighting. We've got Patty Pimblett going out there as well. Patty the Batty versus Bobby Green. A lot of smack talk between them, and we will break those fights down for you Saturday. But tonight... Jeff's going to pop it off for us here. We got a big battle on the main card. Christian Leroy Duncan, 10 and 1, number 37, middleweight, fighting Gregory Rodriguez, goes by Robocop. He's 15 and 5. He's number 18 in the world. Jeff, what are you seeing here? How are we getting paid? I'll tell you, as I was re watching back at these fights, I noticed that uh, both fighters are coming in off a two fight win streak. Uh, Duncan crushed the Cage Warriors at 7-0, jumped into the UFC, and now he's 3-1, which is impressive. However, I don't think he's quite fought the competition level of RoboCop. Both guys like to uh, throw strikes. Both guys like to get uh, throw some uh, aggressive elbow in the, in the clinch against the cage. Um, I, RoboCop has a lot of success when he's throwing the 1-2 combo, pushing his opponent back against the cage, and then sneaking those damaging elbows in there. Um, he is a jiu-jitsu world champion. So I do think if he does get into some kind of trouble, he's going to probably throw Duncan down on the ground and uh, potentially work for a ground and pound finish. But, um, you know, what 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 I like about RoboCop was uh, when he fought Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, he nearly got his nose ripped off and ended up winning that fight with a ground and pound finish. Uh, I'm an, I like the toughness of RoboCop. I think that he could chew in this one. I'm going to roll with uh, RoboCop. I grabbed him earlier in the week at plus 127. It's now down to 121. Um, if you do want to tail me and follow RoboCop, I would grab him now before uh, that line shifts because it's probably going to get uh, even less as the week goes on. Yeah, Jeff, I like where your head's at. Um, I am a enormous RoboCop fan. Uh, it's an interesting fight. A lot of hype on Duncan. He is fighting in his backyard. Um, man, as a fan of the sport, this is one to watch. This is one to watch right here. But um, in the meantime, let's move on. Um, we got a fight Mike wants to break down. Interesting one here. Bukaskis versus Pragnial at light heavyweight. Good scrap. Where are you going here, Mike? I've uh, learned my lesson from Saturdays there where – Albeit we are rolling the 4-0 record on the line. I like a little, little time segue in before I jump in. So I went to the uh, prelim card, not the early prelim card. I'm looking at this Modeskis Bukoskis fight playing out there against Marcin Pracnio at 17 and 7. Bukoskis sitting there at 15 and 6. It's a light heavyweight battle, boys. And I'm fired up here. You know, we've talked about some of these guys coming out. Jeff mentioned it the last breakdown. Cage Warriors, we look for some of these fighters that are on the up and coming and nobody else than Modestus coming off of back-to-back -back Cage Warriors champions. And uh, this guy knows how to go battle. The difficult part for this one here, he's coming off a knockout. Question being, though, not all knockouts are considered equal. Lots of technical proficiency they've been working on in this guy's camp the last two years. He did get a little bit of an extended delay. Uh, now coming back to this fight after almost nine months of rest. And then we look on the other side and we see that 
Procneo did take down Black Bear. He got Devin Clark in a unanimous decision, but it's an aged fighter. This guy's 36 years old. He's fighting a 30-year-old. Yeah, you see the number 35 versus the number 43, but this fight opened up with Bukaskis as a favorite for a reason. The implied win probability for this guy is 65% based on the opening lines. And I think when we look at this fight, the way this one goes down is that uh, we see an opportunity where they spend some time off that knockout trying to get their feet behind them. They try to figure things out. They're trying to go out there and just kind of measure the other fighter. They don't want to get knocked out again early. And I think once we get past that first round, Mutestis settles in. He goes out there. He continues to handle the prolific technical battles that he's been into. And I don't see any reason why that changes here. The way that I opted to get this one done, though, kind of doing line shopping, what I found was uh, Bukaskis to win by decision is plus 150. I'm going to take a little same game parlay action. Bukaskis and the over two and a half rounds is plus 164. I think there's a great live bet opportunity sub. You know, we love talking about these split decisions when it comes to live betting. Probably see an opportunity for that here. But when it does come to the judges, the hometown boy, Bukaskis coming in here, the younger fighter, the up and coming fighter finds a way to get the victory. Going to go to the window. Plus 164, boys. I'll tell you what, Mike, I like that sneaky little play there because I was talking with you earlier about the decision, but uh, I do like uh, getting the extra added uh, value there and taking the over two and a half with the uh, with the fighter. Which brings us to our next fight, Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. Sub, with a five-round co-main event, do you even see this one going the distance? I think it's highly unlikely um, for a bunch of reasons. Um Let's well, start on the B side here, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, Blades, he's a great wrestler as a red-blooded American. Uh, really love the fella. I think he's a good man. And he's got underrated hands. But in this fight, I think he's overmatched. I think he's far slower. I, I, I You know, the youth favors Aspinall. Aspinall on home soil. I think it gets the job done. I think he gets it done pretty gosh darn early um i like aspinall here it, it's square but we we talk about it on this channel it's hip to be square on certain occasions um tom aspinall plus 210 ko round one i think that happens like 50 percent of the time and if he doesn't get out get him out of there in round one i, I think he gets him out of there early enough uh you can get the KO round one, two, three at plus 100 on a, uh, on Fanatics. I think this is massive value. You know, um, Aspinall has not been out of the first round in years. And then, then on the other side, you, you know, if you want the blade side, you want him to wrestle. He hasn't shot a takedown since 2001. Like this guy, he, he goes out there and he boxes. It's a bad recipe. It's a bad recipe against a guy like Aspinall. Give me Aspinall. Give me him early by KO. Square play. Tip to be square. Let's go. Huey Lewis would, in fact, be proud, you guys. I hope you're excited about this big event that we've got coming up. Saturday, reminder, we start at 6 p.m. You'll see on the right-hand side, Jeff's giving us G-Rod there. We got Robocop at plus 121. We got Bukaskis. And the over two and a half at plus 164. And then we go big. Tommy Aspinall, round one knockout, plus 210. We got the overall knockout at plus 100. Trying to get you guys those plus money bets to get paid before those lines get steamed on Saturday. We appreciate everybody rocking with us. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Share your favorite bets in the comments. And be sure to watch the videos that are looping through here. We appreciate everybody rocking with us.